Welcome to Vistax SME Show, where we feature information and about companies and solutions to help them manage their businesses better. Now, today the SME Show we feature Zero, a, a global small business accounting platform which has been named the 2021 Asia Pacific SME Accounting Software Vendor of the Year by global research and consulting firm Frost and Sullivan. Now, to tell us more about Zero is Kevin Fitzgerald. He's Zero's Managing Director for Asia. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me today. Now, let's start, Kevin, with you telling us about Zero and give us an overview of the company's history and how a startup from New Zealand started in 2006 has been able to scale and become a global player. It's a, it's a fantastic story, right? And it, it, I think the great stories of tech start from great stories of founders who solve their own problems. And Rod Drury, our founder, um, had a problem that I believe SMEs still have in every country and, and still have nowadays. And that was really getting access to, you know, enterprise grade technology, to good data, to insights in his business, to make decisions that would ultimately help his business. So it was actually Rod and his own accountant uh, Hamish, who built Zero and, and wrote the first part of code to basically utilize the internet um, to, sh to work on the same general ledger. And, and Zero, you're right, it is a New Zealand company and a very proud um, Kiwi company because we don't see a lot of technology businesses coming from that part of the world. Exactly. It's, you know, you, it's, like the, uh, it's food and agricultural products that essentially, yeah. you think about New Zealand, you think of great chocolate, uh, yep. from New Zealand, <laughs> think of milk. Uh, and sheep, but you don't think of software. No, and and, and how cool is that, right? Like yeah. the and and how has it got so big? Like we we've two point seven million SMEs that sub subscribe to Zero now, and we started the business fifteen years ago. Or certainly Rod and, and Hamish did. I, I joined six years ago, um, and it really came down to figuring out the solution for SMEs and what problems they had. And the thing, Brian, is SMEs globally tend to have the same problems, cash flow, administrative burdens, and just not having enough information around what's going on in their business. So that's what we try to solve for. And I, that focus on solving those problems has helped us scale internationally. And it brought me from Australia, where I, where I worked with Zero, um, to come up to Asia almost four years ago and set up the business here and bring the same solution to SMEs all around the region. Now, let me ask you something. In terms of uh, initially when Zero started, the key markets were literally Australia, uh, it was New Zealand, and then it was the UK. So obviously there's, there's commonalities there in terms of uh, uh, accounting practices and so forth. Now, fast forward, then you are expanding out of of uh, those markets globally. And then you moved to Asia four years ago. Accounting is running uh, uh, very differently in some markets. Uh, tell us how you bridge that gap. It, th thankfully, I, I am an accountant um, and I have been since the late nineties, right? That, that would give you an idea of, of my age, but you know, accounting is pretty standard globally because it's a debit and a credit, right? And you have a general ledger and we brought that general ledger to the cloud. What's different in each country is maybe some of the rules and the taxation. So sales tax or like in Malaysia, SST um, or withholding tax. And that's where we have to really work with local partners or localize our product to make sure that we fit in with what the SMAs need to do from a compliance perspective. And that's really important to understand that SMEs do have a compliance headache. They, they have to pay tax. I would say that's a, a bit of a headache. They have to record it properly. They have to make sure they pay on time and they have to keep the tax authorities happy. So our focus for years, especially through Australia, New Zealand, the UK, has been focusing on compliance. And okay. I would say that was our first 10 years of operation. Then we started to really get under the skin of what else can we do for um, zero SMEs or SMEs globally. And we actually changed our tagline many years ago from 
beautiful accounting software to beautiful business because beautiful accounting software meant accounting and compliance, whereas beautiful business is about a bit more of a holistic view. And that was the journey our platform went on to not only take care of taxes and compliance, but start to turn it into solving problems around cash flow and insights for business owners. And, you know, I speak to business owners every day. They know their business inside out. That's their job. Like they live and breathe their business. But if you ask them to pull up insights or, you know, what's the, who's the biggest customer you had last week? Who's the biggest customer you've had last year in revenue terms? They might, they might have a really good guess at that but we can give them the specifics, we can give them insights, and then that really helps them make better decisions around what they do next. Okay, now give us an idea of the the different sizes of customers that you have, Uh, because you you would think that, uh, yes, your your SME customers can be a two-person operation, but I'm sure you have very large customers as well. Yeah, it's, it's, so this this is the brilliance of uh, platforms and also on the APIs. So the APIs that are built around zero mean that we can connect to best in class systems that complement zero. An example of that, Brian, would be an SME in Penang that has 50 staff. We don't have payroll in our product. So our product can work for, I would say up to about 200 staff. But if the staff keeps growing, and the, the SME, the business owner, needs to keep doing more and more payroll, more and more compliance, they will choose a cloud payroll system from Malaysia, and they would plug them together with zero. We've already done all the hard work in the background to wire the systems together. The customer, the SME, then sits down, has, has both subscriptions, and basically connects the settings, just the way you would download an app onto your iPhone or Android, Right. It enhances the power of the product you already have. You know, you don't use your phone for phone calls as much anymore, right? Like you've got apps everywhere. If you think of zero like the device, you can add services to it to make it even more powerful. So we actually see some companies around Southeast Asia that have two and a half thousand staff use zero because they have a very comprehensive cloud payroll solution that plugs into zero. So they need to make sure that their uh, payroll system can cope with their size and complexity, but the accounting piece that we do, we can scale up with them. So we have customers who are one or two man or woman operations, don't have an office, maybe trade online, right up to you know pretty big SMEs, I would say, more into the, the medium size. Now, Kevin, you, you mentioned you came to, to Asia four years ago. What has been your go-to-market strategy? Did you partner with, with some of these payroll providers as, and, and go-to-market as well as uh, accounting firms? What, what was the strategy? Both, actually. So we, we, we know that 56% of SMEs use an accounting firm. So we bring our solution to the accounting firm and we teach them everything about zero. We bring them on a journey of digitizing their own business. And then in turn, they bring zero to all of their SMEs. So, you know, when we, when we first started in Malaysia, we probably had five accounting firms sign up to zero, the real startup accounting firms, the early adopters. Okay. Um, now we have over 300. So those 300 serve probably 40,000 SMEs. So that's how we scale. How long has this process taken and using Malaysia as an example? Because that's one of your newest markets, isn't it? Yeah, correct. It's, it, it is a one to two year process to onboard and recruit the accounting firm and then educate. Like we are teaching accountants how to use the best new technology available. We want to make sure that they know how to use it properly, that they're getting the best from the platform and Brian, we need to make them feel comfortable that they can then bring that solution to the SMEs because if they don't feel confident, they're not going to do it. In terms of your market entry, having a global name like Zero was that a big advantage? It, it is a really big advantage. So um, being an accountant, we are risk-averse people. 
yeah. accountants are risk averse. They want to know about data security protection. They also do not want to be responsible for any problems around data or security that they might bring to the client by choosing an inferior solution. And that's where zero, we're finding it that when we move into markets like Malaysia or different countries around Southeast Asia, SMEs and their accounting firm are choosing us because of the security and the fact that we're a global business and they're not scared about putting their business data in the cloud. The second part of that is our partnership strategy with the banks and the local providers like cloud payroll or inventory management. We, we connect all the systems. So we go in and we build connections to the banks and to all of the local providers. And what that means is it gives us great validation um, to the bank's mutual customers that they pick zero and they're happy with our systems. But also it's not like old school days where a technology company would come in and try to localize their product completely because it takes too long. So yeah. we, fi we find partners in the region. So we want to find the top 10 best cloud payroll providers in Malaysia. So then our customers have a choice. They can pick zero and then they have a, ch they have a choice of who, okay, who will do my payroll. And so on the, on the product development, software development side, how big a team do you have in terms of making these integrations happen? So our, yeah, our, we have a product team that build the platform, but then we have a team that uh, look after the integrations. And that is, that is actually quite a small team. Like globally, it's probably 50 people. What, okay. we've, what we've done is we've made the APIs incredibly easy to understand. So if a, say a point of sale, you know, there's some great point of sale businesses in Malaysia. If one of them wants to connect with zero or we want to connect with them, it takes them less than two weeks to build a connection. So we give them all of the content, all of the API documentation. They get a, a specific developer from zero called a developer evangelist to help them build it. And then it's done. And it's, you know, then the, if there's a great partnership in place already because they've experienced how slick our product integrations are. Now, as you pointed out earlier in the interview, accountants are risk averse. Yeah. Uh, so accountants in SMEs are probably even more risk averse. Now, how do you compete with local players like SQL Account or existing international players like QuickBook and Sage who are in the markets and, and getting them to migrate out? It's, it, it is a challenge, right? Like, and I think QuickBooks, we compete with globally. Um, the good thing that we have, I guess, with, with those guys is they, they closed their offices in Asia a couple of years ago to focus back on the US. So we've shown commitment to our SMEs and our accounting firms that were there to support their education, to keep building the product, build more integrations. With the local players, it's a totally different proposition because most of them are very heavily desktop only. And... Businesses will, SMEs will only move to cloud once in their lifetime. It will only happen yes. once. Yes. And right now there's a big change happening in Malaysia and SMEs might have used um, a business for desktop for solutions for years. But when they come to choose, okay, which one will I pick for cloud? They're going online and they're seeing the reviews on zero. They're seeing our partners, they're seeing our integrations. So they have to make this like, really interesting choice. Do I stick with somebody that used to be desktop and now has a cloud solution or do I try this new globally, you know, amazing solution that's clearly helping a lot of SMEs? It's a good thing for the market. You know, like I think the more and more SMEs we see go digital, the more profitable they are, the more people they can hire, the more money comes into the economy. Yeah, but um, one of the things is uh, the, the pandemic. Mm has changed the way small businesses of, uh, look at things and operate across the region. Uh, what, are you see, what have you seen in the past 12 months? Um, well, I've seen the pandemic continue, sadly, and I hope everybody who's, who's tuning in is, is doing okay. Um, what I've seen is people who were, it falls into two categories, people who were currently considering move to cloud have sped up that adoption. So they've made the decision quicker. And the people who are maybe not that interested have increased their level of interest. So they've, 
they, they, they're more curious. They want to know, okay, well, if this pandemic continues and I can't have everybody in the office or I can't service my clients the same way or customers, how do I, you know, how do I continue to win? How do I have a healthy business in 2022 to 2025? So we're seeing people really look at solutions and say, okay, I'm ready to invest. I know it's going to cut, there's a, there's a cost to it. I yep. think it, people know zero is quite an affordable solution, but you know, all of these advantages it gives me around ordering systems, having all my information at my fingertips, connecting to my bank account um, is a really, really smart investment for them to make. So it's not that all of a sudden adoption of cloud technology has been huge, but it's certainly seen a catalyst in terms of the education and interest in what's needed. And an example would be, um, especially accounting firms who are trying to help their SMEs be successful. Accountants love paperwork and they love paper. And, <laughs> and we're, we, we say to them, like, you, you know, you're renting this big office to store paper. You're paying rent to store paper for somebody else. Um, how do you abolish it? You know, like there's so many benefits to getting rid of paper. Our system can read documents, receipts, invoices, contracts, and it sucks the data out of the paperwork and straight into the system. And with, say, MCO in Malaysia, where people can't travel and get documents around, we've seen a really fast adoption by the firms to encourage their SMEs to use Zero more and more because they need to get the paperwork from the SME so that they can give the SME back the insights they need around cash flow or financial reporting. Now, which of the markets in Asia that you've seen the strongest adoption for your solutions? Um, we, do, we don't break that down, but I can say it's pretty close between Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia. It's okay. been really, you know, the governments in each, each region have different programs and initiatives around digitization. But mm -hmm. this is, we're not talking about a solution that costs 100,000 USD a year. Yeah, you start at $20, $20 a month, right? Yeah, so it's like it, there's no big capital outlay. There's no contract. That you, like it's a 30-day rolling contract. You know, you're not tied into it. So the big decisions around it that sometimes cause inertia are disappearing really quickly because people say, oh, this is actually really flexible. I can afford $20 a month. This is healthy for my business. Um, so we're seeing pretty rapid adoption around those, those three countries. Now, what's next for Zero in Asia? I mean, what are your expansion plans, development plans? Um, I think we, for now, we'll really focus on Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia. There is plenty of SMEs there in those markets that we need to help. Um, we've got a big project ongoing at the moment around what else we're building on our platform for our cash flow and insights. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, we have great tools already, but we're seeing in the pandemic that our current subscribers are logging into zero and going straight to the cash flow dashboards, straight to the dashboards on insights. They're, they're thirsty for information around their business. So we've shifted some of our product focus to make sure we focus on developing those tools to make them even stronger. So that will help us scale across the region again um, and continuing to develop our mobile proposition you know, it's probably one of the things I learned when I came to Asia. The, everybody's got an incredibly powerful mobile device and there is less laptops and, you know, browser-based businesses around. So we have to keep developing our mobile solution. And that's probably where I think we have an advantage. We know our, our more of the local competitors don't have a mobile solution yet. So maybe we're a, we're a little bit ahead in that race at the moment. Now, Kevin, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you, Brian. It's been a pleasure. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to Kevin Fitzgerald, Managing Director for Asia at Zero on Vistex SME Show. This video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites, as well as our website, www.vistex.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks a lot for tuning in.